Okay, guys, we're looking at infinite limits today. So limits as that go without bound. So something like this. I have an asymptote and I have a function like that that goes to infinity or let's see here to negative infinity. So the limits that increase or decrease without bound are called infinite limits. And we say that they go to plus or minus infinity, but actually what we technically, they, the limits do not exist when they go to infinity. So, um, and that's because a limit has to go to a finite constant number. And infinity doesn't fall within that realm. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is determine where the vertical asymptotes are. So remember that's when the denominators are equal to zero. So we're going to start with this one. I'm going to take the denominator 2 times x minus 1 is equal to zero. Uh, divide by 2, x is equal to 1. Okay, so I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. For b, when is sine of x equal to 0? Well, sine of x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0, pi, 2 pi, so on and so forth. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, this one, let's go ahead and simplify it. I'm going to go up. So f of x is equal to uh, x plus 4 times x minus 2 all over x plus 2 times x minus 2. I have a factors that cancel, so I know that factors that cancel, so when x is equal to 2, there is a whole, and then the other factor in the denominator, when x is equal to negative 2, we have a vertical asymptote. Remember that from rational functions? Yeah. Okay. So how do we deal with limits when I have a vertical asymptote? So for the first one, what I have, you can always look at a graph. Um, in fact, let's look at this graph. Okay, so I got the first one, y equals 1, turned on. Here we go. We're going to graph this guy, and it looks something like that. So notice as x goes to um, 1, on the right hand side we're going towards positive infinity and on the left hand side we're going towards negative infinity so how do i solve this algebraically so the limit as x goes to our vertical asymptote one on the left hand side is equal of one over two times x minus one so i'm going to choose a value that's really close to, to one but on the left-hand side, so like 1 over 2 times 0.999 minus 1. Okay. So because we are approaching, so just choose something that's close. So 0.99999 minus 1 is going to give me some kind of 1 over 2 times some kind of uh, negative number, right? A negative decimal, very small negative decimal. So when I divide by that decimal, so one into like a whole bunch of pieces, that's going to give me negative infinity. So one divided by a negative will give me negative infinity. Um, on the right-hand side, the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of 1 over 2 times x minus 1 is equal to, choose a value, 1 over two times, okay, just beyond one, so 1.0001 minus one. So I get one over two times a positive number, which gives me infinity. So one over positive decimal, actually, a positive decimal. So um, that's going to give me something very, very large. So at vertical asymptotes, we're just checking to see if the value is going to go to positive infinity or negative infinity, and we do that by using a little sign test. Okay, so let's look at the next one. We're just going to choose, I'm going to choose one example here. So this guy right here at x equals zero. 
Let's go ahead and look to see what the graph looks like. Okay, so here's our graph. You can see that it looks like teeth because it's a cosecant graph. Okay, so when I have the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, that would be 2 of 2 over sine of x. That would be something like 2 over sine of um, like negative point zero zero point nine nine nine. Let's do that. Okay. So approaching from the left from sine, I know that that value is going to be negative. So two over a negative number would give me. So I know that because we're at an asymptote, we're either going to go to positive or negative infinity. And since I have a positive divided by a negative, that's going to send me to negative infinity. Okay, looking at the graph here, see right here, the graph is going towards negative infinity. Okay, on the right, if I look at the graph at zero, we're going to be going towards positive infinity. Let's check it out here. So zero from the right of two over sine of x. So that's something like two over sine of one point, sorry, of point zero 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 one. So I know that that value is going to be positive because sine looks like plain sine looks like that. So we're talking about the values coming from the right are going to be positive. So 2 over a positive number, so a positive divided by a positive, gives us a positive infinity, which matches our graph. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on to properties of infinite limits. So if I have um, the limit as c of x approaches c of f of x is equal to infinity or doesn't exist, then the limit as x approaches c of g of x equals a value, a limit, then what happens when I add those two together? What we get is um, infinity. So the limit of f of, so we can actually write these as the limit as x approaches c of f of x plus or minus the limit as x approaches c of g of x. And for the first part, we know from up here that this is equal to infinity, plus or minus just like a limit. Well, how do you add something to infinity? You don't, so this is just equal to infinity, and that's it. It's just going towards infinity, okay? Um, or you can say does not exist. Okay, sometimes it's nice to know that our limit is going towards infinity, but te because the technical definition of a limit says that the limit has to go to a finite number, technically the limit doesn't exist. But it's nice to know where the arms go, right? Yeah. Okay. So the next one, the limit as x approaches c of f of x times g of x. So that would be like, it, and if... And if the um, uh, limit value is positive, so if I have f of, the limit of f of x is infinity times the limit of g of x would be a positive L, that's going to give me a positive times a positive, which is going to go towards infinity, positive infinity. Okay. The next one, if I have the limit of as x approaches c of f of x is infinity still, but this time we're going to say that the limit is equal to a negative number because it's less. Oops, I forgot my. Um, it's less than zero, so negative l. It's going to give me. It's going to go towards positive or negative infinity. Okay. All right. Next, if I have the limit of f of x over g of x, that it would be infinity over l, which is infinity. Next, we'll have L over infinity. So a number divided by infinity parts. Well, that's like a thing like a dollar divided by infinity people. You're basically going to get zero. Okay, so be careful there. All right. 